Amid the pandemonium of screaming teenage girls on the Beatles' second tour of America in 1964, sober journalists would ask them over and over, what are you going to do when the bubble bursts? It was a running joke for the lads from Liverpool. After years of working their way up together, they had grown into a tight-knit group of young men who could riff off of each other while meeting the press. John, Lennon, and I will probably carry on songwriting. And then George, Harrison, will go into basketball, quipped Paul McCartney while in Kansas City in September 1964. Or roller skating. I haven't decided yet, Harrison chimed in. The boys were having fun, at least in the beginning. As we see in Ron Howard's fabulous documentary, The Beatles, Eight Days a Week, The Touring Years, they were as flabbergasted as anyone by their unprecedented popularity. Why do the girls scream? A reporter asks Lennon in a clip. I don't know, he replies laughing and shaking his head. The bubble would burst on the Fab Four a little more than five years later. They had already stopped touring. Their final public concert came on August 29, 1966 at San Francisco's Candlestick Park, just after an L.A. appearance at Dodger Stadium. Yes, a half century ago. While there have been countless documentaries and dramatized films about the Beatles, Howard's touring years exhilaratingly captures the essence of the story better than any of them. It opens in limited theatrical release today and becomes available Saturday for streaming on Hulu. Some venues are also showing a 30-minute film of the Beatles' 1965 performance at Shea Stadium in New York. One of the joys of the film is the amount of archival footage that has been rarely or never seen before. The filmmakers made a plea to Beatles fans to submit personal audio and visual recordings from that time. The real coup turned out to be from a woman who...